Chinese balloon was shot down after it crossed the U.S. What was its real purpose? Welcome to China Uncensored. I'm Chris Chappell. There's been a lot of talk of war with China lately, so you'll probably want to catch up on the military-industrial complex, which I explain in the latest episode of our new channel, Gamers Unbeaten, how Nier Automata deconstructs the military-industrial complex. Link is below. Balloons. Some are decorations for celebration. Others are a sign of evil. And if it's a gender reveal party, they're both. For the Chinese Communist Party, though, they're for spying, and also evil. Last week, a Chinese balloon was spotted floating over 60,000 feet in the air above Montana. This isn't just any balloon. It was unmanned, maneuverable, and huge, with a payload below the balloon the size of two to three school buses. Well, hello, everybody. Uh, I am sitting in my driveway here in Billings, Montana. And right now, there is a ground stop on our airport, and this thing is up in the sky. And if you thought I was being dramatic calling this balloon evil, then maybe they shouldn't have made it look like the Death Star. It was later reported that the balloon had already entered the U.S. Air Defense Identification Zone near Alaska on January 28th, crossed into Canada on the 30th, and into Idaho on the 31st, then spent several days going from Montana to South Carolina. The path wasn't random. According to U.S. officials, the balloon went over several sensitive sites, though what exactly they were wasn't specified. However, Montana is the home of Maelstrom Air Force Base, where there are over 100 silos holding nuclear-tipped intercontinental ballistic missiles. The fact is, uh, we know that it's a surveillance balloon. Once the balloon was detected, uh, we acted immediately to protect against the collection of sensitive information. Hopefully by protect against the collection of sensitive information, they mean put up a tarp with a pointed message on it. Before images of the balloon over Montana hit the press, it seems the U.S. government tried to keep the balloon's existence under wraps. The U.S. had already tracked its movements over Alaska. But once it became public, people started asking questions. Questions like, is that a moon? No, it's too small to be a moon. Or questions like, should I shoot first before asking questions? Just kidding. This happened in America. They didn't ask if they should shoot first. You think I'm kidding, but local authorities were seriously worried that people would actually start shooting at the sky. Even U.S. President Joe Biden reportedly wanted to shoot first, but he was advised not to since the crash landing could hurt civilians. The balloon incident made headlines right before U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken was going to visit China to meet with Xi Jinping. So, in response, Blinken canceled his China trip saying that the Chinese balloon was an irresponsible act and a clear violation of U.S. sovereignty and international law. By the time the balloon reached the Carolina coast, several airports closed down. Man, imagine having your flight canceled because of a balloon. I'd say we're living in the dumbest timeline, but this is too stupid even for that. Even Southwest had a better excuse for canceling their flights. Then, an F-22 stealth fighter jet from Langley Air Force Base, Virginia, accompanied with F-15s from Barnes Air National Guard Base in Massachusetts, intercepted and shot down the balloon with an air-to-air -air Sidewinder missile six miles off the coast. The debris landed on shallow water in the Atlantic, making it easier for naval vessels and the FBI to hunt for it. The U.S. Navy released photos on Tuesday showing their sailors hauling pieces of the balloon onto a naval vessel. One official says the pod fell largely intact and should provide a useful opportunity to examine and reverse engineer Chinese intelligence and communication systems. But while this Chinese spy balloon is the first to make big headlines, it's not the first one. In fact, China has done it several times and has been doing it all over the world, including the Philippines, India, and Japan. I'll tell you about that and what these balloons are for after the break. Welcome back. The U.S. shot down a Chinese spy balloon after it crossed over the U.S. But at first, Chinese state-run media, like the Global Times, tried to insinuate that the balloon didn't come from China. Yeah, that Chinese spy balloon could have come from anywhere. What next? You're going to say that Turkish delights are from Turkey? That's just profiling. 
They said the U.S. is cooking up stories of a made-up China threat. Then China's foreign ministry admitted it was a Chinese balloon, but that it was a civilian vessel used for mainly meteorological purposes. It just happened to deviate from its planned course. Mainly meteorological purposes? Were they just checking the weather over every major military base in the Midwest? What else was it used for? Nothing that would, say, help the Chinese military gather intelligence, right? Nah, if you think that, then you're just hyping up the China threat. China always respects international law and state sovereignty. Just look at all that respect. China doubled down on its story by firing Zhuang Guotai, the director of China's Meteorological Bureau. Which just goes to show that no matter how hard you work, if the Chinese Communist Party can use you as a scapegoat, they will. It must be hard driving buses in China with all those people the CCP keeps throwing under them. In response to the U.S. shooting down China's totally non-threatening balloon, they claim the U.S. overreacted, which makes China the only country on the planet calling the U.S. waiting until a spy balloon crossed most of the continental U.S. before shooting it down an overreaction. It also claims the right to respond further and resolutely defend the rights of Chinese companies. So totally wrong if the U.S. were to send balloons to China, but totally fine when China does it in the U.S. An editorial in The Guardian says the incident is most probably a blunder by lower-ranking cadres or sabotage by hardliners, and they're not willing to rule out evil clowns. But the Chinese spy balloon is not some one-off mistake, although getting caught this time is obviously a mistake. It's part of a larger, more troubling pattern. A defense official said that Chinese surveillance balloons transited the continental U.S. at least three times during the Trump administration and at least once during the Biden administration. This includes Texas and Florida. Wait, is it able to get through Texas and Florida without being shot down? That's actually impressive, considering folks in Texas and Florida even shoot at jokes that go over their heads. Outside the continental U.S., a Chinese spy balloon was spotted near Hawaii last year. And earlier, there were reports of an unmarked floating orb over Hawaii, though that might have just been Goku. The same goes for the U.S. territory of Guam, though there aren't exact details of when this happened in 2022. Not too long after China's latest spy balloon was spotted over Montana, another was spotted over Latin America, reportedly over Costa Rica, Colombia, and Venezuela. There are a lot more than just these incidents. One Pentagon official said five Chinese balloons have circumnavigated the globe, and China has conducted 20 to 30 balloon missions globally over the past decade. As I mentioned, this includes an airship over the Philippines last year, which resembled two solar-powered designs, the Tianhong and Yuanmeng. There's also reports of balloons spotted above India in 2022, as well as Japan in 2020 and 2021. Although we don't have proof that these balloons belong to China, this latest incident in the U.S. is making other countries look for links to these past incursions. So what's the purpose of these Chinese spy balloons? Well, the U.S. military hasn't said for sure, but here are some possibilities. They could be used for taking high-resolution photos, although satellites can do that just as well. They could be used to collect signals from military transmissions. Radio signals bounce off the ionosphere or are sent to satellites in orbit. A spy balloon flown directly in the path could intercept these signals. Balloons could also be used to drop sensors that would then glide to the ground. These could then collect data like sound, radiation, chemicals in the air, and more. For all we know, China might even one day use balloons for carrying bombs or armed drones, which could lead to the most destructive balloons since gender reveal parties. The fact that Chinese balloons have been entering other countries' airspace for years with very little response is pretty weird, right? But it also makes sense that governments would try to keep Chinese spy balloons under wraps. They might want to avoid a diplomatic incident, like the one where they had to cancel Blinken's visit to China. Or they might try to keep it quiet so they can use the balloons against China. A denial and deception operation, for example, the CIA could send false information back to the balloon to trick China into thinking or doing what it wants. But now that photos of this latest balloon have hit the press, the game is up. And the public can call out China's clowning around. And this show is possible only because of viewer support. So, as a thank you to all the wonderful fans who contribute to China Uncensored on the crowdfunding website Patreon, or the exclusive social media platform Locals, I'll answer one of your questions. Ian Pendleton asks, 
Is there any export from mainland China that isn't a national security threat? Anything at all? Nope. Even giant pandas are a national security threat, which is why everyone should hate them, like I do. Thanks for your support and your question, Ian. And thank you to everyone who supports China Uncensored through Patreon. Join us at Patreon and contribute a dollar or more per episode. You get a bunch of cool perks, including me answering your questions on the show. Check out patreon.com slash China Uncensored. Once again, I'm Chris Chappell. Thanks for watching China Uncensored.